today we are at the Shein warehouse. Shein made its US debut in 2015. I have a giant Shein haul. So my Shein package came in. Guys, it's time for a Shein haul. Shein. Shine. I say Shein. It's Shein. When you think fast fashion, you're probably thinking of Shein, the powerhouse fast fashion retailer that's known for pumping out trendy styles at rapid rates. Shein pumps out styles so quickly, they make their competitors like Boohoo, H&M, and Zara look like saints. Not only does their rapid trend turnover rate produce millions of plastic waste, which hurts our environment, their factory workers work excruciatingly long hours in dangerous environments and get paid pennies in comparison to what Shein executives are making. In an effort to kind of rehabilitate their image, they invited influencers to take a tour of their newly renovated warehouse, where they desperately try to promote the improved work environments of their workers while simultaneously trying to hide the fact that they treat their other workers in other parts of the world like shit. Knowing all this information, why would I be making a video titled Shopping at Shein is not that bad? Well, because there's a way to do things better. Fashion can never be 100% sustainable or ethical. At the end of the day, it is a business. There is absolutely no way that prices can be that cheap and shipping can be that fast without someone being exploited. In a consumerism type business, there's always going to be some waste. Whether it's because of low sales or a high disposal rate, there's gonna be waste. The goal of the sustainable fashion movement is to eliminate as much waste as possible. So when you see someone shopping at a fast fashion brand like Shein, it's really easy to shame them for it. Don't they know what they're buying into? But you have to remember that participating in sustainable fashion is a privilege. Sustainable clothing is way more expensive than fast fashion and it's not as accessible. So simply stating that fast fashion is bad, you're hurting the environment, and you're enabling child labor is just simply not enough to get people to stop buying from fast fashion brands. There is no way you can convince a person to buy $160 jeans from Everlane if they can get those similar jeans for $10 at H&M, especially if they don't have the money to spend $160 on jeans. So instead of trying to shame people from buying from fast fashion brands, I think it's more important to just teach people how to shop fast fashion the right way. In order to ensure that the clothes in your closet will actually last, you need to make sure that your clothes are being made with natural fibers. The five most common natural fibers are cashmere, wool, silk, linen, and cotton. Cashmere being the best quality and most expensive, and cotton being still good quality, but the most affordable. But you don't want all the clothes in your closet to be made from natural fibers. Natural fibers are more susceptible to stains, so you probably don't want to wear it if you're going to go work out or go hiking. In comes synthetic fibers. Synthetic fibers are cheaper and more stain and water resistant compared to natural fibers. A few common synthetic fibers are polyester, nylon, rayon, and spandex. In my opinion, there's no such thing as a bad fabric material. They're all necessary for certain types of clothes. The issue with fast fashion brands is that they often use the wrong material to make certain clothing pieces. Let's use this example. This is a black coat. This is also a black coat, but they're made from two different materials. One is 100% polyester and the other is about 30% polyester, 60% wool. Guess which one is which? I'll give you a moment. Okay, the one on the left is made of 100% polyester and the one on the right is made of 30% polyester, 60% wool. Does that mean that one coat is better than the other? Well, not necessarily because they have different functions in my closet. The one on the left is made of polyester and it's a lot more lightweight compared to the one that's made of mostly wool. And because it's more lightweight, I tend to gravitate towards that jacket whenever I want to layer things. If it's actually very, very, very cold outside and I need to stay warm, I'm gonna grab my wool coat. It's a lot softer and more durable compared to the polyester coat, like right here. You can obviously tell that the coat on the right is made from a much more structured fabric if you look at their shoulder blades. The polyester coat is literally slouching in comparison to the wool coat, but like I said, they both have different functions in my closet, so I wear them both effectively. And that's what this video is all about, shopping with more intention.
It's day four, time for the giveaway. So yesterday I gave away a style mystery box and the winner is this user right here. Congratulations. As for today's giveaway, I'm giving away a mini makeup and skincare box. It's full of products from L'Occitane, Kiss, Kiehl's, and YSL. Oh, and Rare Beauty. All you have to do to enter is subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow me on Instagram and TikTok, answer the question below that I have in the pinned comment. Comment as many times you want. The more you comment, the more likely you are to win. And also put your Instagram in the caption so I know how to contact you if you win. The giveaway is international, so I'm gonna ship to you wherever you are. The winner will be announced in tomorrow's giveaway along with the announcement of the next giveaway. That's it, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Okay, but how else can I shop? I 100% recommend renting your clothes. I feel like a lot of times when you have a special occasion, you want to wear a new dress. So you go out, you buy that amazing dress, you wear it for that time, and then you'll probably never wear it again. In that scenario, it would have been 10 times better if you rented the dress instead of actually buying it. People rent clothes all of the time. When you see a celebrity on multiple red carpets wearing different looks every single time, you may think that they actually own those looks, no, they don't. They're basically renting, or a better word for what the celebrities do is borrowing clothes from a fashion house and they get that through the stylist. Yeah, everything that you see celebrities wearing on red carpets, the dresses, the shoes, the accessories, they don't own it. They're just borrowing it for the event and they give it back directly after it's done. I'm definitely gonna start doing that more because although we're in the thick of winter right now, spring is gonna be coming soon. And spring is gala season and I love gala hopping. And every time I go to a gala, I wanna wear a cute dress. So I'm gonna definitely rent my clothes. The best place to rent clothes, like a lot more casual type clothes, is Newly Rent. I was sponsored by them around March and I Loved it. I absolutely loved Newly Rent so much. The clothes there were so cute. There's a lot more on the practical side. Like, I don't think you're gonna find like a super fancy dress on there. But if you do want to rent designer, there are definitely like a shit ton of sites that you can do that on too. And last but not least, I say this all the time, but I thrift. Sorry guys, I thrift. I thrift all the time. Everything that I wear is thrifted. I'm pretty sure all of this jewelry is thrifted. I love thrifting, but thrifting prices are definitely rising though. It really depends on which thrift stores you go to. A lot of people get thrifting and vintage shopping kind of confused. They're not the same. Thrifting is when you go to a thrift store like Goodwill or Buffalo Exchange. But there are a lot of vintage shops that you can go to. Those are the expensive ones. Stay away from that. Those are the stores where they're trying to get you. But yeah, I definitely thrift. Once you learn how to thrift the right way, you will probably never go back to fast fashion because like the uniqueness of thrifted clothing and like the character that it has is just immeasurable compared to fast fashion. So like for me, once I started thrifting, I never stopped. Like I never stopped. If you want me to do a video about how I thrift, I can definitely do that. The last thing I recommend, which kind of ties into the last thing I just said, is that I truly, truly, highly, highly recommend that you guys shop in person. When you shop in person, you are less likely to buy as much stuff in comparison to if you shop online. And this is due to a number of reasons. Number one, you can actually try on the clothes in person to see if it fits and to see if you really like it. You can touch the material in person to see if it feels nice. Rather than if you just shop online, you kind of just have to take the website's word for it and that can always be a gamble. And also, it's a lot harder for you to physically carry all of the stuff you buy if you shop in person rather than online. Imagine if you bought like your whole Shein or ASOS or H&M cart that's worth like $500 in person you had to carry that all the way home. You wouldn't want to do that. So I can definitely vouch for in-person shopping, but I know that can be hard because I feel like the online stores just kind of had the best clothes. So we're gonna have to fight that battle. So yeah. That's basically it. Hopefully this video encouraged you guys to think a little bit smarter and harder when you shop. So happy shopping guys. I'll see you in tomorrow's video. <laughs>